So for today, we're continuing our theme of collage. So we've done two collages now. We did an abstract collage. So a collage that was um, non-representational, non-narrative. So, so an abstract, fully abstract collage. Hi, Nathaniel, how are you? Good to see you. Or good to see your name, at least. <laughs> um, uh, last week we did an animal collage and today we're going to do a different theme and today is going to be landscapes. So I said landscapes, but landscapes, the, the broad umbrella of landscapes can um, also include cityscapes. So if you want to do an image of a cityscape, that works too. So um, one of the things that I like to do before I ever get started is I do like to have kind of an idea in my mind or like a, or either a reference photo or a sketch or a picture in my mind of, of something that I am kind of creating. Um, it'll come into handy for this lesson also for next week when we're gonna do a person, which can get really tricky. So it's kind of nice to already have in your mind a type of landscape that you know you want to try, try to create. It's also really handy to um, you might on your paper want to sketch out your idea. Um, I'm going to switch cameras in a second. I already, actually already uh, started mine, but I'm going to show you my, um, I started mine because I wanted to, I wanted to have something that was a little more complete for you guys. Cause I felt like every week it would just be me starting a collage as opposed to, you know, being in the middle of it. So, because collages do take a while, they're not, a, they're not as quick as a drawing or as quick as a painting can be. Um, but I was going to show you, turn around and show you my um, my inspiration image, and it's just a picture of a house that I found um, like on the Scottish coast. I thought it was kind of pretty. And when you have an, an inspiration photo, that does not mean that you are ex copying it exactly. So this is this is the inspiration that I was I was doing. It's literally just this tiny little house in the midst of like these kind of misty hills. Um, but that does not mean that I'm totally copying this. I'm just kind of using this picture as kind of some loose in, um, uh, inspiration for my own collage. Um, and just like the past weeks, if you've been taking, if you've been following along, um, I'm using magazines, lots of pieces of paper from magazines. I'm also using just regular construction paper in different colors. Um, and some of the things that I'm doing to kind of keep my collage consistent is I'm cutting, I'm cutting the paper into the same shapes. So I'm for me, I'm doing like little rectangles like this because I, I find that shape is easy to cut. Um, but I find that that can kind of make your picture um, or your collage look a little more um, consistent. Also, when I'm looking at this for inspiration, one of the things that I'm really looking at is I'm looking at um, the colors that are in here. So I'm looking at like where the highlights pieces of the, the piece if, if I had pieces of paper that were cut uh, where should I put them where they're a little bit where the land is a little bit lighter where should I put them where the land should be a little bit darker like I see the foreground the foreground is the the front of your of your picture it is like the kind of the darkest colors and as it goes towards the back the colors actually lighten up a little bit they fade kind of like an ombre effect a little bit so this is mine so far and like I said it's really really loosely based on what on my on my on my image the colors don't even really match and that's okay i'm just using this for inspiration you can see i already started um doing the sky and i actually already cut out some of these like mountainous shapes and then right before class um one of the things i was doing is i would cut out a ton of um colors little strips that um were in different uh shades of greens and yellows which i think i'm going to use for the bottom, but I haven't placed any of these yet. I was just kind of loosely cutting them out and, and spreading them on. So now, now that I have them cut out and I, now that I'm kind of looking at my inspiration picture, now I can kind of loosely decide, okay, well, I think that maybe the bottom part of my paper, which is gonna be the foreground, the part that's closest to us, maybe should be the darker uh, areas. So maybe I'll pick out some of these darker greens Kind of loosely place them in and then the middle and the foreground my colors or sorry the, the mid, mid ground as you go as you start at the foreground and it goes to the mid ground and then it goes to the background 
as I go farther back in my picture, maybe the colors should lighten up a little bit. So that's what kind of what I'm working on. So your task today, if you are choosing to do a collage, is to try to make your collage um, a landscape. So like I said, that could be, it could mean anything. It could be, it could be a, a picture of, of land. It could be like a, something that is like a forest or a beach or a mountain, or um, you could do, uh, you could get really fancy. You could do the, the night sky with like a, an aurora, bore, the aurora borealis behind it. You can get really cool and really creative with what you choose. Um, or if you, if, you, if you don't want to do that, you could also choose to do like a, a cityscape. You could do a picture of, you know, a, a building, buildings in, in, your, uh, in your art. It's totally up to you. But the goal today is to try to, um, try to do some sort of land. And like I said, there's different parts of land. There's the foreground, which is the part that's closest to us the middle, mid-ground, part that's kind of farther away or in the middle, and then there's the background, which we all know the word background. Do you guys have any questions? I feel like I'm just kind of blathering along. Um, I wonder if anybody is making a collage or if you guys are just gonna be drawing. So I know that collage can be kind of tricky and it does take, take a lot of time. How's everybody doing? <laughs> and stop talking for a second. No? All right. Well, one of the things that I was doing when I made this is I was, um, I was thinking about like, I was search, I, I basically, when I, when I make collages, I kind of search things in terms of color. So I knew I, when I was looking through my magazines, I was looking for swatches of greens. I was looking, when I was doing the sky, I was looking for swatches of um, blues and uh, teals. Sometimes it's also nice. Some of these papers are just regular construction paper and some are pieces from magazines. And it's nice to sometimes have a mix of the two or um, a blend because sometimes the magazine pieces, depending on where you're getting the color pieces from, can be a little busy. They can, they're, they're kind of like a lot of textures going on. Um, and so it can be nice to have some just regular plain construction paper pieces um, to kind of help balance out the piece. So kind of placed, oh, I didn't mention this before, but if you also, you don't have to cut your pieces. If you choose to, to tear them or rip them, um, that could be a really interesting choice too. In fact, for these mountains here, I actually wanted some contrast between the, um, the very geometric form of the sky and the very geometric forms of the paper on the land. So I actually cut these three, there's three or four mountains out of long strips of paper. And because um, I wanted them to have like a nice smooth curve to them. So you can change how you do things, uh, how you, how you um, cut your paper to kind of decide, um, it, can, it can help you give you some contrast between the different areas of your picture. All right, so now I've placed these, now I've got to start gluing them down, which can be a little tricky. So I'm actually just gonna, now that I kind of have a sense of where they're gonna go and I know I, in general, think I have enough to cover this whole space. Now I'm just gonna actually, I normally don't do it like this, but just in the sake of time, I'm going to put some glue down and just start placing some pieces in. Oop. I'm not being too careful about it. Oop. Is anybody doing a, a collage? Is anybody gonna, curious what, what you guys are going to work on, what you're making? And if you're drawing a picture instead, that's fine too. Like there is no judgment here. I know that collage is not everybody's cup of tea. So um, if you are working on something else, that's totally fine. I'd love to see it. Um, you know, I love to see you guys' work, no matter what it is. Hope everybody's doing good. Has everybody had a good week? I think Nikki would like to share. Sure, what's up, Nikki? Um, I drew like a sketch, then I'm overlapping it. Oh, that's awesome. Beautiful, I like this. 
I got this green from a calendar, and then these are mountains, and then this is a sun, which is setting. Ooh, ooh I love doing sunsets because you, you'll be able to like blend in some really nice colors that way. That's awesome. Very nice. I, yeah, I love, I love doing any kind, anything with like a, with like where the sky is changing colors. They look really pretty. You have, you'll have to find a lot of this, those, those nice sunset colors. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, Nikki. So how is everybody? What's going on? Scott, have you ever watched Eurovision? Um, I have not. I know <laughs> of it, but I haven't watched it. It's happening right now. The only reason I, I, my, my husband and I kind of know and or watch it a little bit is because we lived in Iceland for a year and, um, and Iceland. So you, if you don't know what Eurovision is, it's kind of like, you know, like America's got talent. It's kind of like that where, but it's kind of cool in that the fact that all all through Europe and um, also like Great Britain and I think even Australia and Russia, each each country sends like a an act, a participating like musical act, kind of to this big uh, event, <laughs> and it's it it's basically like all the different countries kind of compete against each other for the best musical act. So it's kind of like America's Got Talent, but for, but imagine like it was like all the states combined against each other. <laughs> and, and it's and just Will, uh, Will Ferrell did, made a movie about that. He uh, did recently. Ago. Yeah, he did. He was like a, yeah, there was a humorous, a humorous movie. And, and actually his act was, was from Iceland, <laughs> theoretically supposed to be from Iceland. <laughs> um, it was very funny. We have, we have watched it many a time. Um, if you haven't seen that Will Ferrell movie, it's it's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's happening right now, and so I hear it going on in the background, and it's just I it's it I it's they they take it very seriously. Some people take take it very 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 seriously. I just think it's like the funniest thing. <laughs> it's kind of it's really fun to watch. But when I was living in Iceland, um, people were very serious about it. Country the, the each country, if you're participating, you get very uh very very serious. But I. I think the, the best part about it is that like say say you're from Italy or or Iceland or whatever country you're from each each uh, as viewers you can vote on your favorite act but you can't vote for your own country so so Icelanders can't vote for Icelanders and Italy Italians can't vote for Italian Italy so you have to kind of like, like spread your vote out which I think it's just kind of it's just kind of fun I like the I like the whole like all the nations coming together part of it aspect of it. <laughs> it's kind of like watching the World Cup if you if you like soccer or football. Football. It's kind of like that. So my next step after I've glued down all of the, um, the, the land part of my picture, then I'm going to start to think about where that house might be laid out on my image. I'm um, going to start to think about um, where I, how I might do that and the colors I might use. So for contrast's sake, I know I want it to stand out. So I know I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to make it uh, probably a bright color. I'm probably going to do it in like whites and grays. And the cutting of the pieces of the house, it are, it's going to look a little different than um, how I've cut out all the land. So I want it to, I want it to pop. So I'll have to show you how I might do that. Okay. 
And don't worry if your little pieces go over the edge of your paper, you can cut them off afterwards and cut them off later. Even things out. Okay, I'm not being too precious about where I put like where I put things make mostly when I when I'm working like this, I kind of think as e about each little strip of paper represents a like a paint stroke in my mind. I'm treating the paint or the the collage pieces as if they were pieces of paint, as if they were paint strokes. It's kind of how I like to think about it. So I'm trying to think about like where would the dark areas be in this in this collage? Where would the lighter areas be? Where would I put that light stroke of paint? Where would I put that dark shadowy area? Has anybody done, did anybody do anything fun last weekend? Everybody's schools must be getting out really soon. When do you guys all uh, finish up school? Is it going to be like like? Do you have to or do you, do you are you still in school in June or are you done at the end of May? Yeah, what's up, Nikki? My school ends at June twenty second. Oh wow. So you go through June. So does that mean you start do you start kind of late like next year? Uh, after Labor Day. Yes, after after Labor Day. After oh. Labor Day. Oh, nice. Very nice. You must Nikki, where are, are you? Where do you are you are you do you live like in New York or where where do you live? In New Jersey. In Jersey. Yeah. So I used to, I, when I was a, an art teacher in New York, I, I lived in New York for many, many years and the schools, I loved that about New York and New Jersey, just all of that area. There's the classes are, um, you end late in the summer, but you, you don't go back until like September, which is awesome. I miss that. In California, I think we get out earlier. Most schools get out earlier and then we go back to school earlier too. Like they go back and kids go back in August. All right, so collages definitely are labors of love. They are, they are not fast, a fast process, but I feel like they end up looking so cool. Like I'm liking how this is, how this is coming out. It's gonna start like, you know, I want the darkest area, the darkest pieces down on the bottom. So I'm gonna pull those out. Darkest ones, maybe this one. I'll use one piece like that. That one. This is a nice one. Maybe these. Maybe this one. Yeah. Okay. So for next week, you're going to want, if you're going to do a, a collage, of a person, which is what I'm going to be modeling. Um, you want to come knowing who you're going to be doing. And you also probably want to come either with a picture of that person. It could be you could do a self portrait, or it could be a picture of somebody else. But you want to come knowing who you're going to be working on. And you also want to come knowing um, or having an image. And that could be a drawing already done. Oop, I'm going to flip this over. So now that I've glued all the bottom like that, I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to cut off. Remember I said, don't worry about how if it over overlaps, I'm just going to trim that off now. 
one of the things I haven't mentioned because I haven't finished a collage with you guys, but when you make a collage, one of the last things when you're, once you know you're all done, you're not gluing anything down anymore. It's really nice to use a clear, it's called a clear matte gesso. And it's basically just like a layer of clear thin paint that you paint over your whole picture with. It kind of helps everything stick down and stick together. So if you really like collaging and you're interested in doing them, it's kind of nice to have. Um, it's called, it's just called a matte gesso, um, which is a cool way to, to like put everything together. It also helps block like UV rays and stuff if you ever want to hang your picture up so that the colors don't fade. Because I don't know if you've ever had a piece of art that you've made maybe when you were like in kindergarten or or younger and you've it's been out or it's been in the sun and you know how it can fade the colors can fade well having a gesso can kind of prevent that it can kind of protect your work a little bit from the sunshine all right now that i'm done with that now i'm gonna have a quick look at my picture this is my inspiration like i said you don't have to pull everything from um, it doesn't have to look exactly like your picture. So this was just kind of like a, like you can see the colors are totally different and that's okay. I was just kind of using this as, as um, uh, a loose, a loose, I'm making a loose interpretation of this, but I am going to look and I noticed the house, like the size of this house. I'm kind of noticing where, so it's still on the land part, but it's the, the, it comes up kind of on top of the mountain a little bit so I'm thinking I'm going to place my house like right about here and I think I'm going to start kind of finding pieces of paper and colors that I think will look good against the background here that will make that where the house will stand out. What's up Kat? How are you? Um, I'm good. I wanted to share. It's like a Koti walrus hybrid thing I'm working on. Whoa, that's awesome. You're collaging it? That's a, or are you just drawing I'm it? I'm drawing it right now. I'm yeah. thinking about maybe collaging it. I love it. That's a really awesome drawing. I like that you nailed the perspective. You nailed like the, the I like all the little fold, the foldy flaps of his um like flippers. Thank you. That's awesome. Really nice job. Really, really nice. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Okay. So I am looking for some more magazines. Ooh. I keep coming back to this magazine because it's got like some nice tans and colors in them. So like I, I know I'm gonna want some light, light colors. Ooh, I like this. So I'm gonna start cutting creams and whites out. And I'm just going to pile them up and have a little collection, a little collection of colors. I'd like to show something. Sure. What's up? Hey, Nathaniel. It's a tree. Wow, that's awesome. It's I like the colors that you've chosen for it. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so one of the things that I haven't mentioned is that, and I, you might have, you might have noticed as I've been working, is that um, I, I almost always start with the background. So I know I talked about like back, like the background, mid ground and foreground, but in reality, this entire thing that I've already done, even though there's no, like none of this white paper is showing through, this is all still just the background of my picture. I have not added in any um, like foreground elements. And the reason I do that is because with a, with a collage, you're working on layering. So I, I wanted to have the, the whole background finished before I then go in and start like thinking about adding in any smaller details on top. So that can be, um, it can be kind of interesting to think when you're working to think about um, what pieces you want to do first. And you kind of sometimes want to have, it's just like a painting 
where you want to have the background almost completely painted in before you start adding in those you know more detailed areas um, in the foreground. Okay. Actually, maybe I'll just use like. So I realized when I was setting this down. Yeah, I think I want just like actual white white. But maybe like this color could be a good color for the. I think it's going to stand out more. I'll need this one. Good for like the shadows. Shadows of this house. Okay. So I'm thinking about it in terms of like shapes. So I'm thinking about the house is going to be a rectangular, like a rectangular prism shape. It's going to be bigger, I think, than In the house was um, in the picture, but I still want it to be kind of small. I think it's going to be about maybe that size. Yeah, maybe about that size. And then, hmm, actually, maybe I think a little smaller. Maybe that size. Get these shapes right. So that's going to be like part of the roof of the house, maybe. Kind of tilts like that. And then I think I need to do the side of the house. I'm going to find the right shade and I want that side to maybe be in a little more in shadow. I don't think I have the right color for that yet. I'm going to find the right color. I want a nice gray. Hmm. Maybe I'll use that blue. anybody has anything they would like to share, you're more than welcome. Um, this is why I wanted to have as much of this done in advance because, like I said, it's a lot of it is a little tricky, um, like in terms of finding the right colors and things. I'm still cutting stuff out. I don't know if this will be the right color or not. Uh, nope, not yet. Not the right color. setting this underneath here and this is going to help me like I'm going to use a pencil and kind of trace out the shape I need so 
kind of like that. This is the shape. It's kind of coming down like this. More like this. I'd like to show mine again, the finished result. Sure, let's see. Whoa, hold on, hold on. Let me spy, sorry, I have a gallery view on my computer. Give me one second, let me just pin this so that I can see you. Whoa, nice. That's a book, that's a book. <laughs> cool, Nathaniel. So what are you gonna do for the background of that? I don't know. Not sure yet? No. Okay, well, start thinking about what you're, what the, what that might look like. So I don't know if you guys saw what I did, but so I used, I'm, I'm literally just trying to build a house. So I used, I knew that this was going to be the front side of the house. I know that this piece, this almost, this is like a rhombus shape. That This was going to be the roof of the house. So I literally built those two pieces out of, out of paper first. There's no right or wrong way to do this, by the way, this is just the way I worked. And then from there, I knew I wanted a, like a darker shade for the side of the house. So I literally just used this blue and I wanted a color that would pop. And I've just traced in and drawn in where the, the angles should be for, this, for the side of this house. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out. And most, for most things with collage, I don't necessarily draw things out, but for pieces that I need to be exact, like this, the angles for the side of this of this house, I needed to make sure that they were, it was in the right um, place. So now when I glue these together, theoretically, it should look like a house. I think it'll stay kind of stay in its place. And then I'm, I'm gonna add in some other details, like I'm gonna add in um, some, uh, some windows on this, I think. I'm gonna add in maybe, um, maybe a, a chimney or two, something like that. Okay. All right. Like I might, I like this blue, so maybe I will use this blue for some windows. Let's see here. So at a certain point, sometimes with collage, you start working very small. <laughs> you got to get nimble fingers for cutting in tiny little details, tiny, tiny details. I think I need to add in some shadows in these windows. So I'm gonna need a darker shade. Maybe I use this. slightly smaller. So this is just the edge. So what I'm doing right now is just to make it look, because right now it looks kind of flat. So I'm just going to add in like a little edge on the edge of this window to make it look a little like, like there's a, um, like it goes in a little bit. So like this is like the ledge of the window. But like I said, you're getting into tiny details now. So these paper, pieces of paper start getting tiny, really tiny. Something like that. Hmm. 
I'm going to glue these pieces down before I lose them because when they get so tiny, that's when it becomes easy to lose. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start gluing. One trick, sometimes I put a little bit of glue on my finger so that I can help pick up pieces. And they're real tiny. And the thing with glue stick is that you can, um, uh, while the glue is still, a, like, uh, when you first put something down, you don't have to, um, you don't have to, you can, you can kind of still move it. It's a little bit movable, which is nice with glue stick. Um, yeah, so you have, you have a little bit of time to like move a piece into its right spot before the glue dries. And it's there permanently. So I kept the background fairly um, ab or fairly, fairly loose. And now with the details, I want them to be a little more precise. So I'm trying to be really careful about where I, the placement of things. I think that I would like to have a shadow. I like, to, I like how there's the contrast in the windows now. It kind of makes the windows pop a little bit. So I think I would also want a little bit of contrast here. So I think I'm gonna cut out two little strips for the edges. So there's gonna be a little bit more of a contrast. So I'm just cutting, I'm just tracing the shape. So I can cut out the shape and then I can cut strips exactly the size that I want. So now that I have this, So see now I have two identical uh, shapes in blue and in brown. I just wonder what it would look like if it was in brown. I think it would, would it stand out? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could use the brown, but I think I prefer it in the blue. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick to my, stick to the blue. But now what I can do is I can cut a little strip here and a little strip here, which I got to glue down immediately before I lose them. Which are going to be just kind of like the shadows, the overhang. So I'm literally cutting out shadows. So this one should be here. one. Oh, don't lose it, Lee. So tiny. So, so tiny. Should go there. Okay. Sometimes it's the tiny details that matter.
Okay, and I'm gonna get this glued down immediately before I lose it. See that shadow very well. I wonder. I need to change the angle of this just slightly. So let me draw that in because I don't want to mess up that piece. Okay, let's see here. Okay, it needs to be a little straighter like that. It needs to come in just a little bit like that. Okay, I think that'll be a little better. That's a little bit better. So kind of like that. Glue things down now. So sometimes it's like the smaller areas that take you a longer time to complete because you're adding in smaller little details. All right, so I kind of like that. I think though that maybe I need a little strip of white back here, just as the other side of the roof overhangs. and Heather Rose say that they're done. Oh, I'd love to see girls. You girls work fast if you're finished. Let's see. How are you? Fine. Hi, hey, girls. Wow. So you cut out some really large areas. That's really beautiful. Wait, oh, can you hold that a little closer to the camera? I want to see the details. Ooh, so you were working with magazines and mm -hmm. you, so tell, tell me a little bit about it. Well, um, I went through my magazine and I found like a bunch of sky pictures and land pictures and water pictures and then just put them together to make a little place. You combine them together. Nice. That's very pretty. Very, very nice. Um, if, if you're, because I can see that you did it on a, um, sheet of, like uh, a paper, what I might do is I might uh, cut around the outside just so you don't have that um, that white border. Or you, you could like cut around it so that there is a border. I don't know, like can you make a frame for it or something? Cause I think it'll look a little more finished if you, if you, if you trimmed it so that the edges were straight. That looks awesome. Thank you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yours is like a cityscape. Are they like buildings? Yeah. Very cool. So what are you going to do for the, I like the sun. How are you, what are you going to do for the background behind the, what's behind the sun? Like, what, how are you going to do that? Any, any thoughts? Um, I'm not sure. I'm just going to kind of do whatever. <laughs> you could, it could be a, um, you could do it like a, um, uh, like a, like a multimedia collage. You could definitely do it with like a different, um, like, like you could do color pencils or you could paint, finish like painting in the background. 
It doesn't have to be entirely collage. That could kind of be cool. But that looks awesome. I like how you, I really like how you did the sun. Here. I'm just fixing this corner up. Right. Okay, sticking that in there. Maybe like that. The angle right. So a lot of this is just super tiny little details. Yeah, a little bit like that. Is anybody, um, is anybody else doing any collage? If you're not, if you're doing a drawing, I'd love to see any drawings that you guys have done. I feel like this class, I'm just talking to myself a lot. <laughs> so it's a lot of a lot of tiny little like detail work, which requires concentration. So I apologize if this is a quieter class. Actually, I think it doesn't look finished unless I do like a little. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little little edge. Draw it out. Cat would like to share. Sure, cat. How's your how's yours going? Yeah. Um. So I I didn't do a collage. I, I might do one later. That's okay. You don't have to do a collage. My Coty Walrus hybrid thing. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. I love. It was it. a bit hard to come up with a uh, um, combination because Coty are basically kind of like lemur-looking things. Uh huh. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wait, what happened? Hold on. Did we lose her? Um, yeah, I think the connection froze. Oh, okay. Me? Oh, you're, there you go. There you are. Sorry, your, 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 your thing froze for a second. Um, yeah. But he looks awesome. So you were saying, what was, what was challenging about it? It was challenging because Koti are like lemur -y things with long faces and walruses are round and blubby. <laughs> they are blubby. Lubby is a good word for a, for a walrus. <laughs> they are kind of lubby. <laughs> nice. Well, you did an awesome job. That looks great. Thank really, you. Really, really, really nice work, Kat. Okay. So now I have some of this house built. I think I might need to add in a door. <laughs> I think a door would might be nice. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do a door in like a darker blue. I'm find the right color blue. I think maybe this color blue. Actually, I think this color blue. Okay, this color blue. Tater, hey, would like to share? Sure, what's up, Tater? I didn't do a collage, but I was working on some portraits for some characters I haven't drawn in a while. Ooh. This is Quinn. <laughs> He's awesome, nice. Yeah. Wait, can you show me Quinn again? I wanna see. Uh, yep. Oh rad. I like I like the chair. I like the details. Like the little cherry, the buckle. I love all the little details. And his like the sly his sly eyes. Like he's got a good expression in that picture. Yeah, she do be sneaky. 
Is he sneaky? Is he? <laughs> nice. That's what you you totally can get that even from the slant of his eyes. Okay. Okay. Door here like that. And I think for the rest of my collage, I think I definitely want to add in um, maybe some trees. I think I might want to add in um, maybe a darker strip like right underneath here so that it looks like there's a shadow of the overhang where the, the roof is coming over. Um, but yeah, that might be all I get through to today. <laughs> but I think definitely I can start, also start to think about like, okay, well, if if the house is here, then I'm, and I know that this is like kind of the shaded side, then I might want to think about adding in some darker strips. I could do that now, actually, while this is still a little bit loose, I'll tuck them underneath um, of paper, just so that I can see a shadow. I think I might do that now, actually. I'm gonna draw it in. I'm just trying to get that angle right. I'm going to do it to here. Okay, shorter. Yeah, I think that makes it look a little more realistic if I added in a strip of dark. Like this. Is anybody going to any camps this summer or doing any um, anything art, anything artsy? Any art camps? that all right i think i'm happy i'm happy with this beginning like i said i'm not i know i'm not going to be able to have time to finish oh thanks darian for the compliments um and avery oh that's crazy tater do you, I didn't know you sew, Tater. Do you use this, do you um, follow a sewing machine or use a sewing machine? Uh, both sewing machine and hand sewing. That's impressive. That's really impressive. I'm actually teaching a sewing class in, in Irvine uh, this summer, but it's, it's very basic sewing, like learning like different types of hand stitches. Um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. You also sew, Avery, that's all. Yeah, sewing is such like a, such a good skill to have it like kind of like I can't tell you so many times like that like I wish I was a better sewer I actually know how to hand stitch but I I my mother's I remember like my mother tried to show me about three or four times how to thread her she had this really 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 old sewing machine and it was so um it was so crazy to thread that I just I think I gave up <laughs> I really wish that I hadn't because I I regret not being able to use a sewing machine now. <laughs> it is when the apocalypse comes, you will the people will come to you. <laughs> it's also cool, just a cool skill to be able to follow a pattern if you know how to do that. That's a a challenging thing to be able to to do the the piecework. All right, I'm gonna switch cameras. 327. This class just flies by. It really does fly by. I don't know what happens to the time with this class. <laughs> um, well, 
Yeah. <laughs> Uh, nice. What uh, will you, can you tell us tell us about your about the the suit, the fur suit? Um, I'm working on the head right now, but it will also have paws and a tail, and I'm hoping to actually do some legs. So that'll be fun. <laughs> That's rad. What um, is it like of a different character, or is it like your own design? Um, it's of one of my characters, Cider. I have some art of them. Uh, not sure how well you can see that. Oh, I can totally see that. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, they're going to be made mostly of fleece, so <laughs> they'll have a soft but smooth texture, and it'll be fun to put them together. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so there's only a few minutes left. If anybody would like to share, I know that their work's in progress. I know nobody is finished. I'm not even finished, and I started in like half hour early. <laughs> Um, but I'd love to see any works in progress that you have. Well, I hope that even if you didn't finish that you guys go on to keep making art and, um, and if you do ever finish something like over the course of the week and you want to share it with me later, like if you have your animal and you want to share it now, or if you finish working on your abstract collage and you want to share it share it you could you're always welcome to work and finish things on your own um in fact i hope you do i hope you guys do spend some i know most of you do actually <laughs> spend the rest of your week making some art um we are gonna have classes in june so um i don't know we're, we haven't put out the theme yet, but each each instructor, I think we are going to have, it might not be as, um, so the summer, summer is coming up and our, um, I know that uh, we, our classes might not be as consistent as they are right now, just because some teachers uh, might be taking uh, vacations or just weeks off. So, but we still will be having classes. They just might not be every single day like they are right now. Um, but uh, I hope you guys tune in because we'll be posting the dates for um, June really soon or the times and times for June. As always, uh, just as a reminder, we are a donation based studio. So um, we uh, welcome any, any, anything you have to give that they keep our doors open and our literal, our, our, our virtual doors open, <laughs> our virtual windows open, I guess, windows on our computer but also our, our in-person doors because we are gonna be starting to do um, in-person lessons at the studio starting in June. So if you are local and want uh, to do any in-person lessons, check out our website. You can, uh, you can sign up for private lessons. I just, I'm, I'm, I think I have, I have three right now on Saturdays that are awesome. Um, it's so much fun to teach people in person. Um, and we're gonna begin to do, be doing that in the center really soon. Um, Nikki, I see your hands up. You want to share? Yeah, this is the progress. Ooh. So, uh, awesome. I'm going to try to do clouds here, but yeah. I think these tops. Um, I, I realized I had to take these mountain tops off so I can just. I know that's the tricky part was because you got because you have to layer it's like it's you have to it's definitely like you, you have to work in layers but yeah so I like how you take those off and then as soon as you're done with the sun in the sky you start placing the um those mountain tops back on top yeah you almost have to think about like what is the thing in my picture that is the farthest away so like I always I almost always start with the sky on the picture because that's going to be the thing that is the farthest away and then you work like towards your towards yourself so nice really nice i love this i can't wait to i can't wait to see a finished one i hope you work on finishing it that looks rad thank you for sharing nikki all right um i hope everybody has a great week i hope everybody goes off and makes some art and i will see you again next week all right thanks scott bye, bye. bye. thank you, thank you. Bye. no problem bye